Today on I Rate the 80s, we're looking at those toys that forever revolutionized the toy industry. And it just happened to be the very first thing I collected as a kid, which were He-Man. Back in 1980, Mattel was in search of a toy line that would equal the success of the hot-selling Star Wars action figures. And after two years of working on a prototype, they ended up releasing a barbarian line of figures called He-Man. Now the first set contained eight figures, which would introduce kids to the battle between good and evil. And in this first set was He-Man, Skeletor, Man-at-Arms, Stratos, Merman, Tila, Zodak, and Beastman. Now, no one knew it at the time, but Mattel was cooking up something that had never been tried before. And their plan was to make a cartoon centered around a toy line and use the cartoon as a marketing platform. Now, this idea is pretty much commonplace now, but back then, this was not heard of. One year later, the He-Man cartoon debuted on television, and a second set of figures were released that rounded out the show's main cast. These included Evil Lynn, Manny Faces, Trapjaw, Ram Man, Triclops, Mechaneck, and the blue He-Man clone, Faker. Or, uh, well, he was here just a minute ago. Ha <laughs> ha! That idiotic show host! It is I that took your figure! Ah, ah well. Soon after, Mattel's gamble had paid off, and He-Man became a huge success. The figures were selling like hotcakes, and quickly they released a third set of figures. And this set included classics like Orko, Webster, Clawful, Buzzoff, and more. And even Cobra Khan. Oh, damn it. He-Man was selling so good that Mattel even went on to release vehicles, accessories, and huge playsets as well. Ta-da! Oh. Ah. <laughs> but the following year of 1985 was probably the biggest year for He-Man, as the show had spawned a He-Man movie that introduced us to his sister, She-Ra, as well as a whole new group of bad guys. Now, I remember seeing this movie at the theaters when I was a kid, and it was awesome. But what was even more awesome was that the characters from the movie were now included in Series 4. There was Hordak, Grizzler, Mantena, they're all here, including some more bad guys from He-Man's second season. Ooh, fuzzy. But sadly, the movie's main goal was to introduce us to the world of She-Ra, since that would be replacing the He-Man cartoon later that year. And with He-Man out of the way, Series 5 became dominated by She-Ra's bad guys. Now there was also a She-Ra action figure line released that year too, but those were mainly targeted towards girls. By now, the He-Man toy line was on its last leg, and Series 6 would be the last set produced. But not before giving collectors the now hard to find sorceress figure. Hey baby, come here often. Mm. Now in 2002, Mattel decided to revisit He-Man by releasing a whole new batch of updated figures. And some of these look pretty damn impressive. There was He-Man, Skeletor, Man-at-Arms, Merman, Tila, Manny Faces, Trapjaw, and even Cobra Khan. Oh damn it! Alright guys, so how do I rate these? Well, He-Man was a big part of my childhood, and far back as I can remember. And some of these figures just bring back a lot of good memories. And even the new ones are pretty cool as well. So, this one's another nostalgic overload. Alright, 80s fans, well, that's it for me. I'm out of here. Ha <laughs> ha! These are exactly what I've been looking for! I'd hand those figures, Skeletor. Those are mine! Not anymore, you irate chump! <laughs> oh, that's it. You asked for it! By the power of Grayskull! I have the power! What? No! Stop this! Ah, on! Ah! Silly Skeletor. He made it for kids. Hey, that's my line! <laughs>